Cheddar Caves. Cheddar Caves. Cheddar Caves. Cheddar Caves. Cheddar Caves. Cheddar Caves. Hello, my fine friends. Welcome to Cheddar Caves. Um, I've headed home. I'm self-isolating <clears throat> inside Cheddar Caves, as you can see behind me. If you listen to the podcast, there's a big load of stalactites and stalagmites and stuff behind me from Cheddar Caves. Uh, welcome to Rich Herring Sideways. Look at the news. Something happened weird there. I hope everything's all right. Let me know if anything's wrong. Something just jumped up. I think it was Chris Evans, not that one, dicking around. But I didn't think he was going to be here. Um, you're very welcome. They're really, they can't be this. Oh, that's that's. I thought there's only forty people watching. I'm not performing in a forty people. I'm a superstar, my friends. Uh, I am uh, not really. Uh, well, I am really in Cheddar Caves. Yes, obviously, the internet signal is very good down here. Um, but uh, the reason I've come here is uh, because the bad news from uh, COVID, and I think also mismanagement, is that Cheddar Caves is currently closed and not reopening for the foreseeable future. And now I, I come from Cheddar. I didn't, I wasn't born there, but I grew up there. I worked in Cheddar Caves. It's one of my first jobs. Actually, this is the Frozen River. I believe this is in the St. Paul's Chamber at the top of Goff's Cave. And uh, even when I worked at the caves in the mid to late 1980s, they didn't even have cave guides anymore. They just had people trying to protect. We were basically there to answer questions and protect the displays, what they call the formations. Uh, and I stood right by this. This was You went up to this top point. You'd stand here and there was a little... Uh, commentary thing if there was no one around you could turn it off but otherwise it just went round and round the same thing over and over again and you could if you wanted you could turn the lights on and off if you if you bothered they would do it automatically as well i think if you if you didn't want to do that uh, so i stood right by this formation and i'm pretty sure when i was here just about there just about there oh, so hard there maybe that's it there there was a little crocodile in there maybe that's it there it was just a stone that looked a bit like a crocodile, but I think someone had put there, because that was the frozen river. Uh, a lot of times uh, people ask me if it was made out of cheese. But it's dredging up some memories for me. I'd buried uh, two old, some shillings. That, not that I was old. Uh, we still had shillings in the currency, and I buried 20p, I think, in shillings in a bit of soil. They go and dig it up and see if that. Oh, you can't get in. So uh, I'm just... I just wanted to give a shout out to Cheddar. I hope everyone there is okay. Uh, obviously, no one will be watching because there's um, no internet there. Um, except the, in the bit I've got here in the caves. Oh, but the tissues, tissue of lies is almost falling apart already. Um, but there, there's been a lot of bad things happen because of this COVID-19. I don't know if you've heard about it. That's one of the things I want to take a sideways look at. In the news, um, and uh, yeah, so welcome. I, I, if you were around last night, uh, we uh, recorded a Rahala stuffer with Ali and Sally. So hopefully that'll be enough for them, and they won't interrupt my my news program. And um, I can get on just uh, taking my sideways look at the news. I've had a, a nice morning. I've been trying to take things a little bit easier if I can. Yesterday I was very tired and I sort of spent the, spent the afternoon just watching TV and stuff, which I haven't done for ages. I watched Blade Runner for the first time in my life. You'd think I'd have watched that, wouldn't you, with all those sexy robots in it, but no. Didn't think it was that good. Um, sorry to Blade Runner aficionados. Uh, this morning I walked with the dog and I took a little plastic tub with me and I put, picked some brambles. I listened to Michael Ian Black, who's my guest on Rehelisman next week. And uh, doing a podcast where he reads Jude the Obscure and commentates on it. He's reading the whole thing. And, you know, he's very, he's a, he plays poker. He likes to do weird podcasts. He's, he's like the American me. I'm wondering if we meet and talk to each other whether the universe might be destroyed. I think he's we're, we're the weird, obscure comedian in our own little zones. Uh, and there's a danger, you know, one of us might take over the other zone. Anyway, it was. I felt so happy. I felt like I, I came home and made a crumble this evening with my son and my daughter, and uh, I ate some of it tonight. It was lovely. And uh, this is some of the... I foolishly put on the shirt while I was making the crumble, and that's some of the butter that my kids splashed up at me as they were mashing the crumble together. You know, I just thought, 
this is the life, isn't it? I don't know if I want to go back to the real world. Not sure I want to leave my house again. I think I just want to go and pick brambles and make bread. And I might give up all this comedy lark. We'll see how it goes. You know, maybe I could do a bit at night time where I come and chat to you guys on here. But that might be enough. And then I can just leave the showbiz world behind. People will remember me vaguely. Ah, that guy. I mean, they're still they're pr they're probably asking that. Regardless. Um. So anyway, yeah, a lot of stuff that are going on my mind. You know, I'm 53. Maybe it's time to retire. If this can take off, this could be it, can it? This could be all I need. Me sitting in a cave, taking a sideways. This is how I'm going to do it. My sideways look at the news. Um, you know, people subscribing with their Amazon Prime accounts. Don't forget to do that. You know, we we had a lot in the early days. It's gone down a little bit. I mean, when I say a lot, it was enough. Um, but anyway, welcome. It's lovely to see you all. Thanks for coming along. Um, Two hundred and twelve people in now. I was just, I was just killing time while I waited for people to turn up. I mean, fucking turn up on time. Oh, that's my sunglasses. That's to keep my hair out my face. Two levels of glasses. Thanks to the people who noticed the uh, double hairband last week. And now I put an effort into this. Um. So I hope I put the uh, Ali and Sally Rahalastabar up on the podcast feed. So God knows what the norms are going to make of it. The the hundreds of thousands of people who download that podcast. Suddenly they get welcomed into this world that 200, 300, 400, 500. There's about a thousand of you. Keep on coming back, you dumb asses. Um, but anyway, welcome. I'm a bit tired. Uh, I forgot to bring a drink up with me. We'll see how we go. I've got a lot of sideways looks at the news to do. So let's get on with some of that. And I think hopefully Ali and Sally are happy uh, with yesterday and they won't need to interrupt. So. Uh, my first bit of news, uh, this is from Daily Mirror. Truckers in Kent passport alert. Gove reveals Brexit plan for county border. Um, I, you know, I don't want to tell the the Brexiteers, the the lever files, I preferred to call them. They had the better names and that's why they won. But the lever files, if we called them the lever files all the way through, they would not have won this. Oh, what are you? I'm a lever file. Oh, fucking hell. Um, we said that the union, the United Kingdom, would break up. They're oh no, that won't happen. We we'll, we said you know well they're all the, we won't be able to trade with the European Union. Oh nothing will happen. That will all be the same. All that's going to happen is all the immigrants will have to go home. That's all. It, that's why we're doing it. That's what the that's what the lever files were saying. And we said you know there'll be what about Ireland? Uh, no, nah, that's not a problem. Nobody predicted that there would have, you'd have to have a passport to get into Kent. I mean that. It sort of, I, I, I like it. I like the fact that lorry drivers are going to be sitting there in a queue. Not the ones who voted remain, but the ones who voted leave. Are going to be thinking, oh, was this? I thought this was a good idea. To have a queue of seven thousand lor lorries, and you need a passport to get through. Fuck me. But uh, the good news on uh, COVID. This is my sideways look at the news. It's a bit serious this week. I'm in a cave for a start. You'll probably hear the echo. And, um, uh, I mean, you know, are you not worried? We've got this, we've got COVID together. They're coming together at the end of the year. <laughs> we, <laughs> the economy's fucked. We're not allowed to go out again. It's great news for my uh, Twitch channel because, or my Amazon gaming channel. What is it called now? Why have they changed the name? Fucking Ian Amazon, that prick. Um, it's great for us. We'll carry on doing this. We'll do snooker on Mondays. We'll do Rehalistopper on Wednesdays. Some great guests coming up. Uh, we'll might do something on Tuesdays as well. We'll do this on Thursdays, Fridays. I'm gonna have a big wank. That's my plan. Just gonna sit. I'm, I might do it on Twitch. That'd be the twenty-five pound level. If you wanna sit back and watch me having a wank, twenty-five pounds a month. You can watch it every Friday. Why not? Got to make some money somehow, haven't I? But there's no, there's no clubs open or alternative twenty-five pound level. If enough people. Sign up for the £25 level. I won't masturbate on television. You've got your choice. Take your choice, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I'll be in a high-back armchair. Thank you, Brian Bramble. And 
Uh, I, I tried to join. I tried to get at Sally into OnlyFans. Someone's saying you need OnlyFans for that. I want you lot watching me wanking. I want people who don't know who I am to watch me wanking. If I'm going to have people watching me wanking, I don't want people who are aware of who I am. I'm not sick. I want strangers to watch me wanking and pay me money to do so. There must be somewhere you could do that as a job, right? 53-year-old fat man wanking in an armchair. Must That must be a job. Someone would pay for that. Well, it's going to get to these extreme measures, my friend, but it, hopefully it means that there'll be lots of uh, Twitch stuff. But, um, and I, I, I predicted in my uh, book, which is coming out on November the 5th, The Problem with Men, we might do a little bit more about that later, uh, that they, you'll be reading it during the second lockdown. That was my prediction as I wrote it. I finished it in June. And uh, so I'm delighted that I'm going to be proven correct. Thank you to Martin Faye Porty. You subscribed with Prime. For six months, that's what we need to do. You need to remember to come back. I'd say about 500 people, which is quite a big proportion, maybe not quite that many, of the people who were subscribing have, are not subscribing every month. So if you, if you could come and do that, just do the maths. We will plough all that money back into jingles, making fantastic new content for this show mainly, but also for other shows. So thank you for your support. Um, do, of course, as well, while I remember, do support um, our snooker Kickstarter. We're not getting the money from that. All the profits from that are going into live comedy clubs to try and keep them afloat. Many of them are not going to be able to keep afloat, but we'll try and keep the good ones afloat, uh, or at least some of them. Uh, and uh, if you like Donkey, you don't even have to like snooker. You can get the I Hate That Donkey t-shirt. Even if you like him, you can still get that t-shirt. Uh, and here's the latest. This is the latest t-shirts that that's the 70 pound level and above but you do get a lot of other stuff as well on that fantastic punani album so head to rahalastupa.co.uk slash kickstarter if you would like to make a contribution to that there's look these things are all exclusive they won't don't say when where can i buy that t-shirt it won't be available afterwards okay uh, only through ebay only through people who have bought one then selling and selling them on scalping them is that what it's called or making a fortune uh they nearly everything we do goes up in value so um if you then eBay it. But, you know, why would you? You want to lay that down, look after it, keep it. Uh, so please support that if you can. Right. So I just want to talk about this. Uh, there's uh, the Helsinki Airport. Uh, where's that? Finland? Finland? Um, they're using sniffer dogs to, co to detect COVID. Close to 100% accuracy. Dogs can smell. They know what COVID smells like. I mean, this is a game changer, right? This is all we... I've got a dog. I've just got to teach it to smell the difference. I've been smelling like weird stuff around the house today and it's all following me around. I don't think it's in the house and I've had a bath. I don't think it's me. And it's an indescribable smell. I wonder if I've got COVID and that's the, it's a sort of metallic-y, burning plastic. I can't quite, can't quite work it out. It's, it's following me around. Do you think that's COVID? Maybe it makes you sort of slightly metallic. Maybe I'm turning into, maybe I'm a robot, Richard Herring. I didn't, and I didn't even realise, like in Blade Runner. Yeah, maybe I'm a robot. Blade Runner wasn't so bad after all. Let me out of the docks. Oh, I had anticipated you were going to say that. Let me out of the docks. This is terrible. Come on, let me. I thought you were going to leave me to do my sideways look at the news. You're not doing a sideways look. Is there a full on look? There's nothing sideways like that. There's letting me out of the docks now. I'm not letting you out of the box. I'm having a great time talking to the folks about giving up show business. You gave it a long time ago. Oh, I knew you'd say that's why I said it when you weren't here. You gave it a long time ago. Yeah, I get it. I was going to give up comedy. You gave that a lot. You know, when did you? You had to start something to give it up. Yeah, well done. You got there eventually. You're so funny. I am funny compared to you. All right, it's uh, Ali. Here he is. Sally may come out later. Well, she might not come out. We're not going to have everyone. Again, only six of us can be it. Hello! Boys and girls, it's me, Ali. I'm winking at it. Can you see? I'm winking. I'm flea dugging and winking. No one likes the same trays. I'm cheeky knee. I mean, I don't mind you doing the same phrases. No one likes the same trays, Rich. No one does. And I don't mind you doing it, but can you just do them at an appropriate time? Do the I'm winking at it when you've said something offensive. Then you go, I'm, I'm winking at it. Let's do that. Oh, that was a good impression, didn't you? Thank you. Uh, you didn't even leave me a mouth when you said it. I know, I'm, you know, I'm practicing ventriloquism. Oh, you should get, you should practice a bit harder. No, you're not doing that well. What do you mean? Well, no, nothing. 
I don't have to practice. I've got you know, I've got you and you speak, don't you? Yes, I can speak, Richard. That is correct. Are you starting to believe this, Richard? I what I'm. What do you mean, starting to believe it? Starting to believe it. You're starting to believe that I am real. Well, aren't you real? I'm flea dagging. I'm flea dagging. Look at me. Uh, three dagging. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, you're my best friend, Ali. I don't know. You don't have to laugh when I'm saying it. That's a, it's a difficult thing to to say to people. You know, I'm, I'm, I like you. I want, I want us to be friends. It's, it's not. Ah, I just, we really liked each other. So, you know. Well, I mean, there's things that annoy me about you for sure, but, um, you know, on the whole, I, you know, I speak to you more than I probably speak to anyone else. <laughs> That's true. This week is certainly true. I don't have an hour-long conversation with my wife ever. No. Don't discuss, I don't take a sideways look at the news with her, no. I don't really see my friends anymore, no, because you're know, here in the country, don't you? Yeah, and they're all pricks. They're all, like, in their 50s. They're really old. They're not like me. I'm young at heart. You know, that's the thing about me. I don't want to hang out with a lot of old guys. And if I go and try and hang out with young people, they kind of look at me like I'm weird and tell me to fuck off. So, you know, I'm, I'm trapped. I mean, you are trapped, Richard, by your youthfulness at your age. It's a terrible restriction. So that's why I just want to stay at home making... Black green apple crumble. Well, you could do that. I don't. I don't think anyone would, would miss you, Richard. That's what I'm saying. Will you stop laughing at me? You're laughing as well. I'm not laughing. I'm laughing because you're laughing. That's making me laugh. But what you're saying is very hurtful. I think people would miss me if I just said that. That's it. I'm only doing the Twitch channel for now. I'm going to be like Limmy. I'm going to just do the Twitch channel. You'll never see me on TV again. People go. Oh, you know. Didn't ever see you on TV anyway. You're on Taskmaster, eh? Yeah, it's not on yet, is it? You're on the chase? It's not on yet, is it? You're on Tith and Toint? I'm on what? Tith and Toint? I'm on what? Tith and Toint. Four stars, Tith and, tith and Toint. Tith and Toint. Lucky stars. What? I'm on what? You are on Tith and Toint. I'm on Tith and Toint. I'm not on Tith and Toint. Not Tith and Toint. Tith and Toint. You're saying not titting toint, titting toint. Is it? Am I pronouncing it wrong? Am I just getting the inflection wrong? Titting toint, the den shepherd. Who den shepherd? Jen shepherd. What's going on? You are on titting toint. Oh, tipping point. You sound trying to say tipping point. I'm not trying to say tipping point. I am successfully saying titting toint. You're successfully saying titting toint. I agree with you about that, but you're not saying tipping point. With den shepherd. With what? Dan Chatter, Dan Titting Toint. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. I got a sneaking. I got a. a what's it called? I don't, you can't even think what it's called. You, if, you, if you had it, you would know what it's called. I got a speech impediment. A, a what? I have got. I'm flea bagging. Don't you do nice stuff, honey. I can flea that. Aside. No, no, you can't. I can do it as well. Don't do the aside. I only I do the aside. You and then tiny Andrew Collins. It's just not shut up without him. He's not. He never existed. I, I've got a speech impediment, and you should not be laughing at it. You were laughing at me for having a terrible career. Well, you shouldn't be laughing. What do you think about the dog that can? <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> I don't. Know. I don't know. We've done an hour yet? No, 2019, nearly. Maybe it's time. You think it's time to give up? Don't give this up. This is the best thing ever. I won't give up. I mean, I think I might just do this and not broadcast it. What do you think about that? It'll be a good idea. I think that'd be a great idea. You think that's better? What is better? Me doing this and putting it out so people can watch it, or me doing it and nobody watching it? Me just doing it on my own? Well, I think it might be. Worse if people weren't watching. I and mean, what the worst thing that can happen is you put it out and no one watches it anyway. So you try and people to watch it, but no one's watching it. Well, people are watching it. There's uh, 262. That's not bad. 262 in right now. That'll be like about a thousand people will watch this at some point by the time we finish. Yeah, it's, it's good. So that'll be, that'll be the worst. That'll be the worst thing to do. Don't, don't talk over me. I'm sorry I talked over you. Um, the worst thing, don't talk with me. I'm sorry, I was just, I was going to start saying something. Oh, I'm talking, so let me finish my sentence. So you talk, that's how the conversation works. Oh, no, conversation. Don't talk, Richard. It's conversation is people 
I have this argument with my wife all the time. A conversation you can you, know, you don't have to wait for one person to finish talking. You can chip in if you've got something. Can you shut up and talk? I was saying something. I can't remember what it was. The worst thing would be if you did this and you put it out that no one watched it. The second worst thing you could do is if you did it but didn't put it out. You just were sitting here for an hour every Thursday. I mean, there's no one knows what how much I sit here with you. What. No one out there knows, say, I mean, this could be all I do, or I could be doing this seven or eight hours a day. You could do. I mean, I think if you were doing it seven or eight hours a day, I'd expect you to be slightly more proficient. Slightly more proficient. Or proficient. So I think we could, I think they're safe on that, at least. But, um, yeah, you know, I, I, I would say don't give up the day job yet. What is my day job? Picking blackberries? I mean, that would be a nice day job. It's a very seasonal work, Richard. But it's like free fruit just off. Of, if you went to... Well, I, bu- I bu- got like a tub full today. I got more on my own today than I did with the whole family at the weekend. And tub full, if I took that to Marks and Spencer's, you would people would be paying £3 a punnet. And they probably had three or four punnets worth. That's £12. And I didn't, I didn't even plant the blackberries. £12 in my pocket. Bang. Yeah. But I just ate, I've just put them in a pie and we've eaten them. Have you finished with the pie? No, there's still a bit of crumple left. Not as good as Gutter's Gooding, is it? Not as good as what? Gutter's Gooding. Gutter's Gooding. Never mind. I don't know what he's trying to say half the time, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sorry. If I, if I, un, if I knew what he's saying, I would tell you what he's saying. But I don't, uh, I don't understand uh, what he's saying. So, do you think, do you think ant, the dogs can be able to sniff out COVID? Well, no, no, they, they've got a good sense of smell, haven't they? The dog has. My dog has no nose. Really? It's awful. Yeah, it's very sad for them. I mean, they, they exist so much by smell, don't they? That's so much part of their world. Can he st- he, is it just the external part of his nose that's missing and he's still able to smell? Or is, is it everything gone? It's all gone, Richard. The whole nose is gone. Ooh. I didn't know you had a dog. Yeah, I've got a dog. Is it the dog that the is it the one I had in I killed Rusty? No, that's not that's a that's a puppet, Richard. That's just a puppet dog. For what? That's a puppet dog. Why do you keep on saying stuff with peas and bees in it? It's stupid. My dog has no nose. It's terrible. I don't really have a dog, Richard. I was trying to do I was doing a joke. And I life went to the West Indies. She didn't she's in that box down there. Uh, she has got that now that she went to the West Indies. Uh did she go to Trinidad and Tobago? Seriously? You call yourself a Canadian? Yeah. I'm subverting the genre. Well, I mean, it's been done. Right. Let's crack on. Uh, I think we've got everything we can out of the... I mean, so if dogs can sniff COVID, though, that's it. And it's over, isn't it? We just get, like, a dog. Everyone get a dog. And then say, Oi, Wolfie, when i got COVID, go... Grrr. And that's it. Yeah, that would be good. That would be good when that happens. Uh, I don't want to use up all my um, all my material. I haven't got all that much to talk about, really. You all managed to fill this out uh, very easily. I tell you, that rehearsal we did yesterday, the time, I know I did quite a long intro, but the time passed very fast. I know. We had a good time, don't we? Yeah, going. I don't really care whether... Yeah, it is nice to just have someone... I feel we're on an intellectual level. You're very wrong about that, Richard. I am a lot more intelligent than you, but uh, that's fine. I can dumb down a little. I am a dunny. <laughs> I'm cheeky me. I'm winking at it. I'm winking at it. What, are you winking at the terrible pun? Yeah, I'm, I'm doing it ironically. I'm doing a terrible pun. But I'm winking at it. That that was the proper use of... That was the proper use of I'm winking at it then. So you're doing a bad joke, but you're winking at the bad joke. I was winking at it. I'm flea-dugging and flea-dugging. He's a cunt, isn't he? he uh, is that what flea-bagging is? Yeah. You want to do an aside? Just for like, no, 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 I haven't got anything to say. What, do you want me to go aside? No, he isn't a cunt. He's all right, He's all right really? Yeah, I guess that wouldn't work. Um, let's just do... Uh, well, let's do this. I think you might be interested in this new story. Uh, in Norwich, a uh, statue has appeared uh, of the comedy character Alan Partridge. It's been put up. Some people say it's a, a publicity stunt for his new audio book, which is a sort of podcast. Thing, but it's a actual bronze statue of Alan Partridge. Didn't do you not create Alan Partridge, Richard? Yeah, I did. I created Alan Partridge. Thank you for 
knowing and realising that, yeah. So this is, in a way, a statue to me and my brilliance. Um, I wasn't invited to the unveiling. Just like I wasn't invited to the uh, Writers Guild Awards when uh, on the hour when that, even though I was the writer. Ooh. All right. Know, I'm just saying. Um, what do you think? Do you think it's a good... Well, the thing is, actually, what's going on in this country this year? People are pulling down statues to, without permission. People are putting up statues without permission. What's going on? You can't just stop. The world's gone mad. There has to be a long process by which some bureaucrats in Brussels, no, or in Britain, some bureaucrats in Brussels and Britain, yeah, that they, they decide which statues can stay and which can go. We can't just have people putting up statues to fictional people. What if there's a statue of you? Oh, well, that would be different. I deserve a statue. Do you think there'll ever be a statue? I think there will be a statue of me, one of these. Trick such and this will do a tattoo on there and stick it up somewhere. Stick it up your bum, probably. Oh, very funny, Richard. I do. I was always doing that joke with my kids. I've had to stop because my kids keep on saying stick it up your bum. So um, we've had to tell them it's wrong to do that. Uh, but it's entirely my fault that they've been doing it. So we now we say stick it up, then stick it up your nose. But you can say stick it up your bum here, right? Because uh, uh, your kids aren't here. Well, I never know. My daughter might be lurking behind your your Victorian ghost daughter. Yeah, she might be lurking behind there at any moment. Uh, I have to go down and help. I've got the I've got the monitor tonight. My son's been pretty good. He's asleep in his little big boy bed. The uh, sister's bed that she's moved on from, but you know he doesn't know that. Uh, are you sad about Alan Partridge? Should you should do you want to talk about that Alan Partridge a little bit? I'm not sad about. I'm you know I'm a big fan. I've actually just uh, bought the audio book for uh, from the Oast House, whatever it's called. I haven't listened to it yet, but I'm very. I'm. I think they're doing a fantastic job with my character. Do you, do you just do the one? What was just happened? I just got one percent of all the money that Alan Partridge has made. It should be all right, Richard. I think everyone would agree it would be all right. As the creator of the character, it'd be nice, wouldn't it? But I'd be rich beyond my wildest dreams. You, you, know, you would, wouldn't be doing this. That's true. So you know, you have to ask yourself: If I had a million billion pounds, whatever it would be, would I be sitting here with a hundred twenty-eight-year-old venture quiz dummy talking about how I'd feel if I had the money from Alan Partridge? No, because I would have the money from Alan Partridge, and because of that, I would be in a jacuzzi with supermodels. Yeah. I'd be in my um, whatever car, Ferrari or whatever Steve Dugan had. Pays for itself with pussy. What he used to say about it, did he? <laughs> yeah. He's a, he's a nice guy. Um, so uh, that was the 90s. It was very different in the 90s, wasn't it? The things you're allowed to say. <laughs> and, yeah, uh, it was. It was a different time. Um, that's a good question Lord Thorpe Chops has asked. How good would you be happy, Richard? Would you be happy if you'd... Carried on working with Alan Partridge and getting the money from Alan Partridge. I'd be happy if I hadn't worked with him but still got the money. I'd have been delighted about that. Would you be happy? Your life would be very different. It's hard to know, isn't it? You know, that's the thing. Would you change course? Have you seen the film Sliding Doors? Yes, I have. Um, you know, your life can go off in different directions and the things that have happened to me, that if, if life had been different, would it be worth it? You know, my, my children wouldn't exist. I might not have ever met my wife. Even if I'd met my wife, my children probably we probably wouldn't have the same kids. Would be the chances of the right, same sperm meet to eating the same egg at the exact right moment. Yeah, they're small. So, um, you know, it might be different if children alive. They might be better kids. That's the thing. You know, that's it's, it's, I'm on 17 in Blackjack and I don't want to twist. That's a very romantic thing to say. Very romantic. Yeah, someone's asking about an Alan Partridge Rahalist, but I would be interested to see whether... Um, it's very difficult doing a character and staying in character for like an hour, isn't it? I imagine that would be very, very difficult indeed. Yeah, imagine, or even several characters. You have to be a kind of comedic genius to, you know, not only create, be performing the character, but be so in control of it you can ad lib in an amusing way. Yeah, yeah, yeah you have to be so clever to do that, Richard, to keep up the character. Just keep the entertaining enough over the course of an hour or two. You'd have to. I need you. The if you could do that, I I I think you'd be unrecognised because that's what happens with you. You do good stuff and no one notices. Yeah, I guess it's my own fault. You know, I'm very um, 
Yeah, I have on the on, on the surface. Do you want to have the chat about this? Do you want to get something off your chest? No, I don't. But you've asked me, so I'm not I'm not going to be rude enough to not answer. I think because I'm quite flippant and because I do cock jokes, which some people don't understand that are the best kind of jokes if you do them right. Yeah, because some people are just turned off by different sort of things. Uh, that they don't, people don't take my more serious work. Uh, what is what, the more serious work? Like having a dead wasp and making it do TV reviews? Is that the sort of stuff? That sort of stuff, yeah. People don't take that as seriously as they would if I was a more, uh, a less sort of jovial, flippant character. Well, just clearing stones, for example, they would take that. You think that if Stuart Lee was clearing stones, people would, you know. Just let it out, Rich. Just let out the jealousy. You've pushed me down this road. If Steve Coogan was clearing stones, people would say, what the fuck has happened to Steve Coogan? Why has he gone so mental? That's generally what would happen to shit. You're being funny today. Yeah, I know. You're making me laugh because you're being funny. Yeah, it's hard. I'm, I know, I'm playing a character here and you, I'm breaking character because you're so funny. Yeah, that's what's happening, is it? You're laughing too. Yeah, it's having a ride all point. Okay. Okay, look, why don't we go to one of the um one of the other characters. Yeah, which one are you gonna go to first? <laughs> uh I think <laughs> stop making me laugh. I'm trying this is a s I'm trying to sh there's apparently there's some scouts from the TV watching are there? There's some scouts on the TV, what? Cub scouts? There could be Cub Scouts, but you know, I could get a gig with the arcade look who get me in. There's some big T V names, executives and stuff watching. They could put me on Dave or on um UK Play or something, or uh, BBC Two. Yeah, I don't even know. Think of another channel. <laughs> well done. Um, so I'm I'm trying to be serious and trying to do. Yeah, you're having a breakdown, Richard. It's falling apart. So, um, try and pull it together. Okay. Well, I think I'll do the better birthdays with Donkey this early. Yeah, why not? Well, it's very early to do it. Well, I I think you know people like Donkey. I hate that Donkey. I think you give him a chance. I hate him, Richard. Should I just get him in while you're here? I don't want to be on the same same stage as him. To call this a stage, I think. Like, let me go. Let me back on the dock. All right. Hello, 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 darling. All right. All right. Sally, just go back to sleep. Um, let's ha head over for the birthdays with Donkey. Um, once again, we haven't quite got this. Um, we haven't got the jingle together yet, so I'll sing it to you. Mike Cosgrave's working on it. Um, just imagine that donkey's dancing around and stuff like in the other ones. You've lived another year and you haven't even died. The cancer may be secretly creeping deep inside. If you think that's worth the party, your brain's also going wonky. Let's get an Eeyore or a kick from the reluctant birthday donkey. Eeyore! Eeyore! Why can't I die? I just got to die. Where are my ears? Ah! To camera, to camera. Oh, I'm three dying. Uh, hello! Donkey, how you doing? I am terrible, Richard. I am in so much pain. I have no ears. I have no friends. I know how you feel. We can be friends. I'm not your friend. We could sing the donkey song. We're not going to do that. I've got the two, I've got the music and everything worked out. Have you? Yeah. We're not doing it again. Okay, we won't do it this week, but we'll do it another time. Maybe we'll do a video when we can get back in the studio. <laughs> Please let me die. It's time. We're not going to let you die because it's time to do... Uh, this week's birthdays, I've got them here. Um, got two people again emailed in, and uh, that's as many as we can do. So that's. Oh, I don't want to do the birthdays. People love the birthdays, donkey. But there you are in front of yourself. Oh. Look, I own you, and I, I don't want to get like all slave mastery on you because that's not the kind. I'm I'm chill and I'm cool, but you belong to me. I was given to you. You were given to me in 1970, 1971 as a gift. You have to do what I say. I've looked after you. I've kept you alive all this time. I'd like a bit of gratitude from you, my friend. You pulled off my ears. I did. I was a child. I mean, when are you going to let it go? When are you going to forget about it? I can't forget about it, Richard. I can't hear. It's like um, Ali's dog, isn't it? My donkey has no ears. How does he hear? He can't. Because the, the, the ears have gone. Surely the outside of the donkey's ears, though, they're just the equivalent of the pinner, which does not. Surely the inter the whole thing has been ripped out. Look at my head. Look, do you think those can hear those little holes? Well, maybe. Hello, hello. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Oh, can you hear me? Hello. 
I can't hear you. I when you're that close, I can't let read. Oh, ew, just let me die. All right, I'll let you die. But first, let's do some birthdays. I got an email from Richard Dundas, long-time fan of my work, who's still sticking with me through this difficult period in my career. Uh, and he would like to wish a happy birthday to my dear friend, Ed Pearson. Uh, he's, I mean, Richard Dundas uh, is, I think, being a bit cheeky, all right? He says that uh, Ed is 444 months old. 444? Why? Why, Richard Dundas? Why have you done this to me? Why do you knock me? Why do you want me to be in so much pain? I've worked it out. He's 37. That's still bad. That's still a lot. Um, It would make his day to have a special mention from his favourite lug hole lacking puppet, puppet Equidae. Love from Rich, Martha and Peg in Sunny Dundee. Hello. In Dundee. Oh, I just read a thing today saying uh, Jack the Ripper might come from Dundee. I mean, yeah, chances are. Chances are, isn't it? When you look at the people in Dundee. I'm sure Richard Dundas is a... Dundas from Dundee. I mean, that's it, isn't it? He's like so... He's son, so Dundee-ish. He's so Dundonian that even his name is Dundas. That is... I'm Dundas from... <laughs> Sorry, I went, there, I went the wrong accent. Huh? Richard Dundas from Dundee. I done my poo in my pants. <laughs> really? Yeah, this is the this is the kind of stuff I do that ruins the. T that's why no one takes me seriously as an artist. Uh, I don't think it's just that, Richard. <laughs> right. So I think should we do um thirty seven? I'm not going to do four hundred and forty four. That is way too many eors. Should we do thirty seven eors for uh, Ed Pearson and actually and well because well he's done the proper thing. Look. That's what we want. He's set up. I don't know if that's uh, Glenn Wool up there. It looks a bit like Glenn Wool in the sailor hat. Um, I'm presuming that's Ed there in the corner in a bow tie. That's me with uh, with Marmite lid. No, with the wasp. And the Starship Enterprise is there as well. I think these are just some of um, Ed's favourite things. 444 months, but 37 years. So let's try and do 37 years. Okay. Do I have to? Of course you have to. You're contractually obligated. Because I bought you. I, you know, I, I, you're my gift. Until I let you go, you have to do everything I say. Yeah, please, please go, Richard. I'll do, I'll do anything for you. No, you won't. If I let you go, you'll just be off. I know you. Just, I just want to just throw me in a burning bin. That's all I want. I'm not going to throw you in a burning bin. Okay, let's let's look. I think all the look at his little happy face. Look at Ed Pearson's happy face there. Think how happy you're going to make him by doing this. All the little middle-aged boys and girls. Who, if you were dead, wouldn't get Eeyores and magic buttons? Come on, let's do it. So, can you say, I just want to be I'd like to be talk over this. You're very loud. It's I'd like to be able to just try. I nearly finished. Are you going to get to 37? That's 32. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. 33. Was that, did that count? That didn't feel like a heel. That felt like a, like you were going to die. Okay. Huh. That is 37 years. Well, I mean, if you say it's 37, I'd like someone to go back and count, be sure. Yeah, I'm trying to show it was 37. I want to be able to carry on a conversation through. I don't, you know, I don't, I think I need to be carrying on talking through that. Um, It's not good TV, just have you struggling to Eeyore. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Someone's saying it's 35. It was fucking 37. I counted them. Steve Burnett saying 38. I think he's counted the last one as two, but it was one. Definitely 37. <clears throat> Is this what it's come to, Richard? You arguing with people about how many times I think I thought it, that you had pulled the ears off and he we don't even know it's definitely me who pulled the ears off. It was. All right, the next one. I'm not happy about this. I, I've asked people for birthdays. 
This is only going I out because I only got one birthday, but don't do this isn't I don't want this to turn into something like bigger than birthdays. This is birthdays for people who are over eleven. So Gus Honeybun would not give you a happy birthday. This isn't for people Simon Webster, who is a creepy obsessive fan of this show. Um he looks more normal than I would have imagined. Uh, he has asked, uh, I enjoy your content immensely. It keeps me relatively sane. So thanks for that. Please find attached a photo of what I, in real life, is a giant-sized piece of cardboard with lots of cut-out twitch of fun images, painstakingly stuck, stuck onto it. We're bending the rules a lot, but wedding anniversaries are sort of similar to birthdays. They are not. So we want 20 donkey jumps on Thursday. Look, you're not getting donkey. You don't get to choose because this is not a wedding anniversary. We're not. This is not celebrating romance and people managing to stay together twenty years, which is only just because they're too fucking lazy and unattractive to be able to find other people. I know. I'm married. I know what it is. It's just like, oh, good. Well, at least I don't have to bother with all that other shit. I know what it is. Okay, it's laziness. It's not romantic. Uh, so that's not something that you can go. Oh, please give me twenty donkey jump that for being married for twenty years. You'll get what you're given, Simon Webster. Um, and our anniversary was on the 16th of September, which is ages ago. This is like so bending the rules. Didn't make it. He's, he's married to someone. I mean, he claims. I can't believe anyone has married this guy. Uh, his wife is called Marriott, which is the kind of thing you would make up if you were trying to make up a woman that you were married to. I reckon he's just collared some nice looking lady, I have to say, on the streets. And said, Could you, can I just get a photo of you for my friends? And then I can pretend I'm married. You know it's true. Simon Webster. I shouldn't take the piss because he's the kind of guy he could turn. It could just turn and he could turn nasty. Anyway, look, here he is. There he is and his wife, Mariad. I'm, ma- I'm married to Mariad. Sorry if I've mispronounced that wrong, Mariad. You look very nice. You deserve better than that weird Rick Mayle lookalike guy. He's, super, he's more handsome than I thought you'd be. Uh, you're going to get married and Simon for 20 years of marriage. What a wonderful thing. There's Brian the Wasp up there. I hate Donkey. There's uh, Marmite Lid. He's, got, he's done well. That's that. To be fair, he's done, that's one of the best ones of those we've had. Uh, you get the magic button now. I don't know what the magic button is going to be. Chris Evans not that one to set that up. He's not even here. He's working with uh, Mark Thomas tonight. Let's have a look and see what it is. Oh, wow. That's good. Is there anything else happening? Is that? Oh, I love it. I mean, I might just stay in here. This is good, isn't it? There's. You can come in. Look, you're that. Uh, do you want to answer the phone? Hello, is the donkey please kill? Is that the Samaritans? And you got a. Can you arrange the need to end it all? No, you've misunderstood what the Samaritans are, and that's quite offensive, so please don't do that again. Um, Yeah, I, I could stay in here the whole time, couldn't I? This is all right. There's Posh Paws, you're right. Someone's saying to me, Posh Paws. Hello, Posh. Hello, Posh Paws. How are you doing? Arr, I'm very well. Wow, I'm talking through time with a dinosaur. <laughs> um, I don't mean this could. I like this. I, I could get used to this. I, I like the way he's got me sat right behind the desk. That is very clever. Um, thank you to Donkey, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> He'll be back next week. Do email in herring967 at gmail.com if you would like your birthday read out and with your preference of whether you get magic buttons and stuff. But you get what you're given. All right? That's how it is. Good day, everyone. Please let me die. I just want to die. You're breaking the magical illusion by going too close to the camera. Thank you very much. That was Donkey. Uh, and there's those people. Let's get. Let's go back to the logo. So uh, let's welcome back my good friend... <laughs> Ali, oh fucking hell, it's quarter to nine already. Uh, hello, boys and girls, we're back in Cheddar Cave. If you like, we can go, um, I've got another one, we can go into uh, Top of the Pops. Uh, is that a good idea, Richard? <laughs> I don't know. Let's have a look, there we are. Top of the, the Top of the Pops, 1960s studio. I think it was, I think the 60s ones were generally, it was the 70s ones who were, I've actually presented Top of the Pops, so this is uh, you know, not that exciting for me. I was in colour as well, not black and white. Okay, so there's something in Cheddar Case for a little while. Right, what should we look at next? Of course, we're going to look at this. This is from the Sun. Sun newspaper and... Um, not it. 
Well, we've got the actual piece of paper here. I mean, we don't really need it. But uh, we don't need it. But it's it's from the sun. And this uh, is the latest sun. Hilarious. You thought Marmite Lid was funny. I did. I love Marmite Lid. Um, but he isn't funny because uh, <laughs> um, this lady who's a student. I don't have a name because I can't find that. Uh... Oh, yes, I can. It's on the back of that. I thought it was man killed by Asian hornets. Of course it isn't. Rampant rabbit. Here it is. No, not good. A 10-inch willy-shaped carrot in a bag of veg. Oh, Richard, I don't understand why people don't take you more seriously as an artist. I don't understand that either. Ah, oh, I'm winking at it. Um, a shock student found a huge carrot shaped like a willy in a bag of veg from Aldi. Laura G, 21, burst out laughing when she discovered the 10-inch whopper. She was stunned at how realistic it looked. I think she probably hasn't seen that many penises. Uh, it's quite orange. And... I'm not sure. I mean, really, circumcised, I guess, but it's just a carrot with a bit of a, no a, bit of a knob on the top. It doesn't like it has little eyes a bit. We'll see. I think we can all guess where this is going to go. Well, you know, I'm not that predictable. Um, my mum and dad also got a big surprise when she unpacked the 53p bag of wonky carrots at home. Uh, Laurie from Derby told the someone I got home and opened the bag, I couldn't believe it. It's incredibly realistic. I was stunned. She's literally never seen a penis in her life. Uh, they say carrots are good for your eyes. I'm not sure about this one. I mean, not if you poke it in your eye, no. Um, I've never seen one as big as that. Blah, blah, blah. Retired dad Gary said, I was speechless and then just couldn't stop laughing. So I think we found uh, the successor to Marmite Lid. Um, I trusted the son about Marmite Lid that it would be very funny. And... Um, I paid £100,000, as you know, to have Marmite Lid along. I've, he's, found, he's turned out not to be that funny, but I think if we can get through that cocky carrot, I'd call him, and he'd be, he'd be a carrot, and he'd come and go, hey, I'm a carrot, I look exactly like a penis, I'm the best looking like a penis carrot in the world. Uh, that's a Derby accent, right? Yeah, no, that's not. Um, so if you're listening, um, Laura G, I paid £100,000 for the Marmite Lid. This looks a lot funnier, and it looks like it has a lot more life to it. So, uh, you know, name your price and we'll we'll try and do business and we'll see if I can get a 10 inch penis carrot in as a character to this show. Uh, yeah, you're really, you're really pushing that with the underage. I think I am. You know, you don't understand that the way crude humour is, is the poetry of the gutter, that girl looking at that. <laughs> she's sizing it up, isn't she? She's trying to work out what to do with it. That's what the sun want me to think, isn't it? Falling into their trap. Why don't you get the real Marmite lid in to see how he feels about it? But we've only just got back. I know that we've got a lot to get through in the next ten minutes. Okay, fair enough. Here you go. He's the top from a jar of yeast extract who always loves to kid. He says what we're all thinking, but the woke crowd will forbid. He's on a yearly contract for a hundred thousand quid. You'll love him or you'll hate him. It's Marmite lid. Hello, it's me, Night Lid. How are you doing? Sorry, I'm still struggling quite a lot. We're working on it. It should be fine. So, what do you think of the penis carrot? I don't think it's as funny as a Night Lid with a face on it, is it? It's just a carrot with a little nod at the end, nobule at the end. It's not an amusing thing. And uh, I think my job is safe. All right, so... um. What you got for us from the papers this week? You watch your your uh, topical comedy routine on this. Oh, Richard, I've been reading the papers this week and uh, I spotted quite a lot of stories about people dying in uh, quite unusual and, and uh, sad ways. Right, I don't see where you're going with this. So there was um, there was an, a man who was uh, walking his dog and got trampled by some cows. Bad, isn't it? Yeah. There were a couple of guys in Spain on holiday. They were drunk and they embraced each other on the seafront and fell off the jetty and killed themselves. Happened last year. They're doing the they're doing the uh, autopsy stuff now. Right. I, I don't really. This isn't really. Um, 
funny then. No, it's not funny. It's just makes you think, doesn't it? What does it make you think? It makes me think, you know, how fragile life is. I look like a ghost here, don't I? Do you know? You, you're just walking a dog and then suddenly you get trampled by cows. You're not seeing that coming, then, are you? You're not. You're hugging your mate and then you fall over and die. You could literally die at any second, Richard. You think your life is here? You think you're eternal? And, uh. This thing. I think we might get the carrot in, mate. This is, um, you know, the, I can't see the cat. I mean, I think the carrot, if, even if it was saying the stuff that you're saying, um, at least it would still look like a penis a bit. That would make up for it, whereas you just look like a, a marmite that people haven't cleaned up properly. Yeah. There was a guy who ate a bag of licorice every day and it killed him, Richard. Yeah, I've got that story. Um... <laughs> Man dies from eating licorice. Bag of licorice. It doesn't say how big the bag of licorice is. He was eating red licorice and he's he, he 54 years old. I like licorice. I also like Soleros. And I've given up Soleros, but then I'm back. I've had one a day for about eight days now. And it worries me that someone could. He had no symptoms or suddenly going into cardiac arrest in a fast food restaurant. I mean, I think maybe he wasn't the healthiest of guys. Um, I, I love licorice. I'm 54. Uh, the. Glycerizic acid in licorice is to blame. We're told that the patient had a poor diet and eats a lot of candy. Could his illness be related to candy consumption? Dr. Eliza R. R. Edelman said, well, you know, you tell me, you're the fucking doctor. He said, studies have shown that that acid, the active ingredient in licorice, could cause hypertension, hypokalemia, metabolic alkalosis, fatal arrhythmias, and renal failure, all of which were seen in this patient. It's about potassium levels. There's probably potassium in non Richard, so that's my advice. Is there, though? Probably. I mean, it might be on the back of your... Actually, the nutritional info is actually in here. I wonder if I can get into it. Ah, why are you doing this to me? I'm trying to get your nutritional info. That one is very small. I'm in. Um, doesn't mention potassium. And it's on that thing, that nice skin, Richard, nice skin. There's thiamine, riboflavin, niacin, folic acid, vitamin B12. Fat, hardly any, hardly any saturates. Carbohydrate, a bit. Sugars, a bit. Protein, quite a lot. Salt, a lot. Quite a lot of salt. One portion, eight grams based on two slices of bread. Jar contains 31 portions. Oh, why have you done this to me? Sorry, mate. You know, you brought it up. There's no potassium in there, so don't don't eat marmite. He's just he's being paid by the marmite industry to try and make you think marmite is better than it is and it isn't. You've failed again. That was not funny. It made me feel sad. I walk my dog and I'm worried about trees falling on me and stuff. The fact you could just die at any second. At least it would be a, oh, we'd be released from this, right? We'd be released. We all want to. Maybe we've all. Have you ever considered, Marmite Lid, go on, Richard, I'm interested to hear your theory, that all of us have already died, and this is, like, me, Ali and Sally are dead, Donkey's already dead, Hoary Horse, probably is the only one that's alive, you, you're dead, Brian the Wasp, even he might be dead, and this is what's a purgatory, and we're here until, you know, the God, or some electricity, whatever force. Uh, look, I mean, you're just melting away you might even not be here he might be about to be taken up or down i think i'm going to hell i'm not going anywhere i think there's no fate um i think they turn the to laugh well you know that's not jimmy savile made a lot of people laugh didn't he i don't think that's how you get into heaven um maybe we're gone maybe this is the twilight zone that's the and the irony is i think i'm broadcasting to 269 people. But it's not, it's just God looking at me. I mean, is that, you had the precious gift of life, you had that one in 600 million chance. More than that, really, when you think about it. This is what you decided to do with your time. Oh, good. Marmite lid. Marmite lid, ladies and gentlemen. He's the top from a jar of yeast extract who always loves to kid He says what we're all thinking but the woke crowd will forbid He's on a yearly contract for a hundred thousand quid You'll love him or you'll hate him, it's Marmite Lid
Oh, you won't mind him. Hello, it's me again. I'm back. Don't worry, I'll lift the spirit. He really, that's Marmite lid. 100 grand. He really sucks the atmosphere out of the whole thing. And we're just getting going. We get the Marmite lid on and he wrecks everything. I haven't got that much else to talk about, luckily, because there's not that long, long, much longer to go. Um, we've got to talk to um, the Wasp, haven't we? We've got a little song to do at the end. Have we? Yeah, I'm, I'm annoyed. I spent, um, honestly, all week been working on this song. Oh, yeah. The lyrics and stuff, right? I knew the basic idea. And then I swapped computers and um, I got a new computer. Just had something out my glasses. Yeah. And I transferred everything across. But like both computers went off last night and I hadn't saved this document I've been working on for two weeks and I lost, I just went back to this and I lost everything I've done. So I had to very quickly try and rewrite this song. Yeah. And it's not good. It's not good. It's not as good as it was, but I can't remember what it was. I can't remember. It looked good, you didn't know what was there, wouldn't you? Well, it's all right, but it's just not the same. Um, uh, this is interesting. Um, Pablo Escobar, they found... Um, yeah, I've got the story here. Is that all Alan Partridge? That's Alan Partridge, Alan Partridge. Oh, I thought I brought everything across. Pablo Escobar, they found uh, like a bag of... Uh, Money in his house. He was. He's. Dead. He died. Always in in the nineties, I think. But um, is he over here? Uh, I think this might be it. And um, had a few. Yeah, money hidden in a wall found in drug lord's house. Um, don't, don't have a sleep on the job. Sorry. A nephew of the infamous drug lord Pablo Escobar has found a plastic bag with money worth eighteen million dollars, fourteen million pounds, hidden in a wall in one of his uncle's houses. Um. Nicholas Escobar told Columbo Media a vision indicated where to look for the money in the apartment where he lives in the city of Medellin. Uh, he said it was not the first time he found money in places where his uncle used to avoid capture as Escobar reportedly hid millions in properties. He died in a police shootout in 1993. That's pretty... I mean, that'd be nice, wouldn't it, to find £40 million pounds in your house? Yeah. What's the most exciting thing you've ever found? Well, could the... Could the... Your great granddad not have hidden something inside me? Let me actually Maybe you should... I mean, yeah, there could be something in... In the centre here, yeah, could be. But I'd have to take you apart to find it. I tell you, I think Jan certainly uh, didn't put anything in need, but I think he'd probably put stuff in Sally. So why didn't you refer her at all? Oh, that's not very nice. And I D three, Richard, I D three. And I tell you, I think Donkey's head definitely got some stuff in it. Look, Donkey wants to die. I don't know why you're so keen to help Donkey die because that's what he wants. Well, true, good point. That is a good point. Um. Trying to think of anything I've ever found hidden in something, but I think I found like 50p down the side of a sofa that wasn't mine. I kept it. I didn't tell the BBC. That's the thing this guy's told everyone about it. I don't know what's going to happen with the money. Um, he's also found a typewriter, satellite phones, a gold pen, a camera, and a film roll yet to be developed. Ooh. Every time I sat in the dining room and looked towards the car park, I saw a man entering the place and disappearing. He said, The smell was astonishing. A smell a hundred times worse than something that someone had died. Uh, and some of the banknotes, I don't know if that's the bank, it seems a weird thing to say. It's not very clear what's going on. Um, some of the banknotes had, were decayed but, and were unusable. Uh, in the interview, he said he accompanied his uncle on many occasions and that he was once kidnapped by individuals looking for Escobar's wh wh whereabouts. I was tortured for seven hours. Two of my workers were attacked with a chainsaw. That's just in passing, BBC. Could we have a bit more news on that? That's more interesting than the bloke finding the money. What the hell happened with them being attacked by the chainsaw? Well, Richard, uh, it was a good story, but uh, I don't think it was worth the time of the people at home. That Marmite lid has sucked. This was going. This was one of the best ones we'd ever done. Yeah, I agree. And that Marmite lid sucked everything out. It sucked it. Not like Hoary Horses. I'm cheeky me. No one likes the same phrase, Nate. People love the same phrase. No one likes it. Um... Let's get on with the wasp. Let's do the wasp, and then at least we can. Then we can do the song, and then we can go home. We can forget about this unpleasantness. Let's. It's all a bit rushed, isn't it? Why is everything rushed together at the end, Rich? I don't know. I don't. Think, I don't think we're even gonna have time to talk to Sally again. We didn't talk to her last week. Luckily, she was on Rahalaspur. If you missed it, thank you. We saw her ankle actually on Rahalaspur accidentally. Uh, let's get the wasp on here. We go. He may be dead, but he's got his ovipositor on the pulse. His cadaver is desiccated, but his raging veins convulse. He knows the latest blockbuster and the top of the pos. Buzz, buzz, what's the buzz with Brian Wasp? Hello, it's me, Brian Wasp. I'm from the north of England.
happened suddenly? This is <laughs> to try and give me a son character. Hello, everyone. It's me, Brian Wasp. That's the original Brian Wasp. Anyone who says it isn't is an idiot. You can compare that to the original one and see what you think. Uh, what have you been doing this week, uh, Brian Wasp? Well, Richard, this week I've been looking at logs. At what? Logs. Vlogs. 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 Like web log. Web vlogs. Vlogs. Like diaries online. Oh, blogs. You've really got your finger on the pulse. And I offer Foster. Yes. I, I, I. I offer Foster. Are you going to do the. Are we going to go with the Northern accent? Yeah, why not? These all don't know. Are they going to tune in? In three months' time, they'll think I've always been like this. Well, it's good. It does help. Uh, Distinguish you from the others. That was a, an absolute spur of the moment decision, though, wasn't it? Aye, aye, it was. Uh, so, what blog have you been reading? I've been reading your blog, Richard. Warming up. Oh yeah, well, thanks. I've been reading the blog from Friday the seventeenth of July, twenty twenty. Shall I read it to you? Well, I mean, I don't remember what it was. One lady, one lady noticed he had a wasp nest in the dirt work of our house. So today, a man came over to deal with it. I stanced the three and that and he might get up on the ladder and so now renew the nest and the wasp and take them to a wasp farm. But he just got a long pipe and pumped gas through it and aimed it at the hole. He told me the particles would stick to the wasp and the nerve gas could kill them and the nest would be destroyed as the wasps would head to protect their queen, surrounding her with their poisoned bodies, which would then kill her. It was a little bit gained the thrones and more brutal and slow than I might have thought. But to be honest, if it meant there weren't us buzzing around right down the bathroom, then I was cool with it. Look, um, I didn't know you when I wrote that. I didn't have this, but that's not the point, is it, Richard? You are... Zzz. Thanks for remembering to buzz. Zzz. You are a, a, the lost Hitler. You are committed lost genocide. I might have died. That might be why I'm dead. I could have died in that. It was about... August when I started that was about that time. It could be, mate. Yeah, I'm sorry. You know, I'm sorry if I killed you and everything, but you know, I thought the man would take the wasp. For, oh, I didn't know he was going to kill everyone. It was you disgust. How could you kill us all? Why? Why did you kill us all? Why? With nerve gas. It's the most in wasp pain thing I've ever heard. I'm really sorry, Brian Wasp. Oh, you think I'm going to do your show again? You're sorely mistaken. Well, I hope you don't, because we've got too many characters. I can't even get Sally on. There's too much stuff going on. Hey, look, um, thanks for watching, everyone. We haven't quite finished. Um, my It's audio, Love Audio Week this week, uh, and I know there's a lot of audio files out there probably listening to the podcast. You disgust me. Everything you do is disgusting, and I hope the, the authorities will clamp down on you, but they haven't done yet, and you're allowed to love audio in whatever way you want. Uh, my book will be coming out as an audio book. We haven't yet recorded it, but I've recorded some little snippets. And I'm just going to play one of them in for you now as a little surprise treat. So here you go. Asking when's International Men's Day on International Women's Day is like going to someone else's birthday party and instead of bringing them a present and singing happy birthday, smashing up all their gifts with a baseball bat and shouting, when is it my birthday? Why aren't I getting presents? Why doesn't anyone care about me? When I was six, I went to my next door neighbour Claire Allen's birthday party and we played Pass the Parcel and somehow, and I still suspect some kind of scam given that Claire's mum was operating the music, Claire won and got the bag of sweets in the middle and I lost my shit. I wouldn't calm down about the unfairness of it all until Mrs Allen gave me a mini Mars bar. I'd made a valid point about the unfairness of no one celebrating my birthday at this party just because it wasn't my birthday and I ate my sweet confection of victory. But was there anyone at that party who didn't conclude I was a total dick? Was anyone thinking, I can't wait until Richard's birthday comes along and we can really celebrate what a fine fellow he is? Or did it make them less likely to show enthusiasm or show up on July the 12th, which is my birthday, by the way. So please get your presents ready if you want to get me something. There you go, that was nice, wasn't it? That's just a little advert for my book, uh, which is available to pre-order, and that's the audio book. If you're with Audible, I think it's going to be on uh, Apple and everything as well. Um, and you can pre-order from your local bookshops or from some massive conglomerate, wherever you like. Uh, it's out on November the 5th, in time for November the 19th, so that you can read it before then and be prepared. 
Um, so thank you very much for joining in. Yeah, thanks everyone for uh, listening to the show. I hope you enjoyed it. Sorry that uh, you've gone a bit northern as well. No, no, I haven't. <laughs> yeah, I've... Oh, it's a, and I just got one of those. I said, "It's a this is infectious, isn't it, Richard?" That's what I think. So when you hear someone do a funny accent, you all want to do it. Um, should we have a go at this? So this is. I'm. So I've literally was writing this ten minutes before the show, and it's not. This isn't how it's going to be. And we're going to get some music sorted out. It's going to be amazing. But we, we. I think we've done a version of this before. But this is. Uh, this isn't what it was going to be. And it, it hurts me. But uh, we're going to end on a nice song. Do 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 do. do, do. I'm a regular guy, I'm an antique, I tell jokes to get by, I can't really sleep, I like to dress in fashionable clothes, I'm in a jacket that's a hundred years old, I hope the Trump will end up in the, I hope the Trump will end up in the dock, I think a woman's face is on the end of my cock, I'm cheeky knee, he makes me so cross with his old fashioned views, whilst I abhor his sideways look at the news. We're as different as chalk and some different coloured chalk. But when we get together, I find I can talk and I find I can joke and I find I can sing and I find I can win Seth and impersonate Sting. What, the bloke from the police? Aye, aye. Giant steps are what you take. Wanking on the nose. <laughs> I'm going to say winking. I was winking at it. Yes, we're very slightly different yet somehow the same. If I do a heart, then I'll take the blame. I'll be there for you because we're closer than lovers. And whatever we do, we'll do it together. Are you running lovers together there? Yeah, I am. I'm cheeky knee. I'm cheeky knee. I'm a little uptight. I like Kiki D. I just think she's all right. I'm very well hung. I don't have a todger. I once went in the and the Sonic Lodge. <laughs> We're as different as cheese and to distant height the cheese. But when we put our heads together, we find we're the bee's knees. And I find I can dance, and I find I sing what you're thinking, and I find him a bit much. Come on, I'm just winking at it, winking, I'm winking. But it still feels like we share the same DNA, because it's hard to get stunk out of Tathy Nashe. He ain't heavy, but he isn't my brother, and whatever we do, we do it together. We do it together, and it'd be good if we actually sang that together, but that's not possible uh, until. Something else happens. So that will be um that will be our song that we end this <laughs> show on. We'll have music, we'll have dancing girls, it's gonna be great. So uh thank you, Ali. I hope you enjoyed that. Oh, no, I thought it was alright. I thought it started very strongly and then uh I think the last twenty minutes went down. It went off the buzz a bit, it went off the the doyle. Yeah, don't say buzz. Yeah, I think the others the other characters killed it a little bit. Yeah, well you are doing well, it should you should just stick with the magic formula. That's all I'm gonna say. Good. Well, thanks for joining in with the song. Sorry I, I messed up the lyrics. Sorry about the Alan Partridge stuff. I just, uh, you know. It's all right, Richard, don't worry. You know, I, I feel I feel bad. Uh, look, I hope you've enjoyed it. Do tune in on Twitch. Um, uh, on Mondays, we're doing the snooker. Don't forget about the wonderful uh, snooker t-shirts and donkey t-shirts you can get by going to rehelisper.co.uk slash kickstarter. Uh, we've only got 10 days to get to £20,000 and all the profits from that are going to live comedy. So it's a good cause. Uh, don't forget to link your Amazon Gaming and Amazon Prime accounts and give us some free money. Don't forget to go back and subscribe every month. You have to do that manually, I'm afraid. For the free ones, if you want to give us actual money, you're welcome to. Well, yeah, don't give us actual money. Give us Ian Amazon's money. Uh, GoFasterStrike.com slash badges is a great place to go if you want to give us actual money and you get loads of extras for money. If you do that, um, and and buy my book, the problem with men, that'd be nice as well. We're going to try and get some uh, sketches and stuff together for this show. If we can get some more money, we're going to try and introduce new characters. Got a little idea for a cocky carrot. Just need to find a cocky carrot. And um, are we being raided? Hello, raiders. Always just raid just as I'm closing up. Uh, thank you to Tom West UK. He's just subscribed for seven months. It's terrifying that we've that it's possible to. Uh... Luke Kempner has arrived. Hello, Luke, and hello, Luke's people. Thank you for turning up. I'm just about to close down the shop, the top of the posp. That's where we are today. Um... Yeah, good. I'm just checking. I've got everything. I was going to talk about uh, Mummy's Boy. 
they've reconstructed that kid's face from his skull, but also there's a picture on the sarcophagus of his face, which made that a bit easy. That was my brilliant take on that. I was going to do something about... Oh, good to see old Trevor. I'll do some extra bits for the people who just crashed the party. Trevor McDonald is split with his wife at the age of 81, and that gives us all hope <laughs> that there's a way out. He's 81 years old. He's thinking, nah, fuck it. I want to be single. Uh, after 34 years of marriage, it's sad that Ter Trevor and Joe realised they weren't making one enough happy. Uh, Trevor is still very much in demand work-wise and wanted a fresh start. He feels young and still has a twinkle in his eye. He's 81 years old and he's getting out there and he's putting it about. Good old Trevor McDonald. Good luck to him <laughs> and to his wife, who's significantly younger than him. And will pr I reckon he's going to regret it. <laughs> Uh, and uh, yeah, good new character, Trevor McDonald's cock. We'll see, we'll see you in Amazon. Um, worst raid ever from Brian Bramble. I didn't really know what was going on. Okay, thank you very much for watching and listening. Back every Thursday, Wednesday night, Rahelisper starting up again. Michael Ian Black next week, Stevie Martin, not that one the week after. Um, John Cairns the week after. I'm doing a special 300th episode with John Robbins, who will be interviewing me partly about my book and partly about my fantastic career. We may even do that in front of an audience, but hey, it's not looking likely, is it? Uh, and it may be a pay to view, but we'll be doing it to raise money for refuge if that is the case. And uh, Ed Gamble's coming up after that. And then I'm going to try and get some more Americans in, I think. That's my plan. So there's lots of stuff coming up. If we are in lockdown, I will do my best to keep you going. And I think maybe on Tuesday I might do something for snook, an extra snooker thing. And I hope that that will lead more of you to go to rahalastaba.co.uk slash kickstarter and put in a bit of money and help us push over £20,000 so we can give some money to live comedy. Thanks so much for watching. We should have ended on the song, but, you know, just if just stop the podcast after the song. Ah, too late. But go back listen to the song again and stop hope you enjoyed it thanks so much for all your support thank you very much for subscribing and all the uh nice tweets and other support you're giving me in my mental breakdown i think i'm okay i think i'm in on the joke cheers guys take care